Spoon! Hi everybody, Robert Jones back in the kitchen actually doing a cooking video today. How about that? So, uh, story time before we get started. So, when I was a kid, every year, as a special treat, my mom would make us, for our birthday, whatever we wanted to have. And I don't know what kind of, like, a bon vivant child I was, but every year, I wanted stroganoff. And it was my favorite thing to eat. Um, I loved the sour cream. I loved the beef and the mushrooms. I was eight years old, and that was, like, what I want. I guess because chicken nuggets didn't really exist, and I didn't even know what that was, so... Yeah, so every year I wanted stroganoff, and uh, it was generally made with ground beef. We weren't the wealthiest family, but ground beef was perfectly fine, and it's perfectly fine today. We still make lots of ground beef around here. But ground beef and uh, regular sirloin beef at Costco is like the same price per pound, so why not upgrade a little bit? So, check it out. Here is what I'm going to show you how to make today. It just looks like a leaf in a bowl. This is a beef stroganoff, and I'm going to show you how to do this from the ground up. Now, the special part of today is we are doing a big, massive, army size batch because we do meal prep here in this house. In this house, we do meal prep. We do meal prep usually once a week. Um, raccoon goes to school and is gone from like 6.30 in the morning to go swimming and doesn't get back until like 8 o'clock when I come back from Aqua Zumba. So the last thing that either of us wants to do is cook. So we always have... Uh, lots of meals in the fridge just ready to go, but we also like to have real food. So Sunday night is usually our prep. It's actually a Monday today because it's nice and quiet and the house is empty and it's a lot easier for me to film. Ba-dum-bum. ba, -dum -bum. ba -dum bum All right, so let me show you what ingredients we're going to use and then we're going to get started. It's not that hard to do. Now, it takes a little bit extra time because we are doing a meal prep, but remember, we're getting like... 15, 16 meals out of this. So yeah, that's totally worth it. Um, by the way, invest in some good glassware. You can get these things at Costco or whatever else. You can get a whole set of these mini um, small things that are easy to take as lunches in your lunch box or in your lunch thermal bag, if you will. And it will make your life so much easier. And they go right in the dishwasher when you get home at night. All right, check it out. This is what you're gonna need for this video. Okay, you guys, over here we have our ingredients. Just setting it out really quick for you here. We have six pounds of beef. We have the uh, beef round top. Normally I get that cut up, but they didn't have any, so we're going to do it today, and you can learn how to do it. Super easy. Um, we also have some Vidalia onions. We have some white mushroom, button mushrooms. Um, you can use whatever mushrooms you want, and you can use whatever onions you have or want to use. Uh, these are just the ones that I had. We have some sour cream. You can use the kind you like. We have some coconut oil, which we're using instead of butter today in our potatoes. Uh, it's going to be more of a keto feel. Blah, 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 blah. You'll get it. Uh, we also have some salt and pepper. So some real basic ingredients here, including Burbank russet potatoes. So we got about five pounds of those. We got two pounds of mushrooms, two giant onions of six pounds of meat and uh yeah sour cream and it's good stuff so we'll tell you about that along the way let's get started just thought i'd uh, poke you out the window you can see what i see out the window it is a very nice day today probably about 65 degrees here in the monterey seaside area there's my view um i don't know if you can see but the actual ocean is right there all right let's make some potatoes Okay, you guys, I got about a half a pot of water here. You just saw me throw some salt in here, so we want it to be salty like the ocean. And uh, I'm just going to put this on the stove while we are peeling our potatoes so it starts to get to a boil. Okay, I am using a speed peeler today. You can use whatever kind of peeler you want. Uh, mine is a little dark from age, but I love this thing. Um, the good thing is, is you can use it any way you want. You'll see. Um, we're just going to peel the potatoes and uh, wash them off, set them aside, and then we're going to cut them up. Let's get to it.
Okay guys, now we're just gonna cut up the potatoes into about one inch chunks so that they can cook evenly in the, uh, in the pot. We put them in the colander pot here, which slides into the soup pot, and that way it just makes it easy to get it out. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can do your own way. You can fish them out of the water with a slotted spoon or whatever else. You can microwave them. You can cook your potatoes any way you want. So I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do it here. Now you're gonna notice on a couple of these, um, they do have some inclusions and I'm gonna cut those out just to keep it nice. So, there we go. Boom, mushroom mountain. So we've got it all chopped up. And again, they're gonna cook down, so it doesn't really matter what shape they are, um, just as long as they're even. So there's my version. Okay, you guys, there are lots of different ways to cut onions. Um, I'm just gonna show you my way that I do for this. It's just a fast and easy way. If you don't like my method, feel free to use whatever way you want. Now the onion size, of course, is up to you. Um, I like mine particularly small because Raccoon likes them that way. Um, well, for me, it doesn't matter. He likes them almost non-existent, so that's perfectly fine for me. I don't care. Um, but basically what they're in there to do is to get the flavor. So um, let me show you how I do mine. I cut them in half, I de-skin them, and then I slice uh, through most of the way, leaving the the root on just because it's easier to hold, and then I chop it up and you'll see. It's pretty easy. All right.
Ta-da! Onion! Okay, and for those of you who get a little squeamish, um, I'm going to use the red board today for the meat. Um, wooden boards are perfectly sanitized. Don't worry, there's no pathogens that carry on them as long as you clean them thoroughly. But uh, some people have commented in the past that they get freaked out, so I'm going to be using the red board for the meat. So there you go. Okay, so here's how we're going to cut the meat. So basically these are about an inch, inch and a half thick, and I want to make them bite size. Since we're making a meal prep, the goal is to have the lunch or dinner ready to go so you don't have to use a knife while you're sitting at your desk at work or something like that. Um, Raccoon is at school all day, and uh, the easier this is to eat, the better. So we're trying to make nutritious food that's easy to eat. So in that regard, we're going to cut this down to bite-sized pieces. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now remember, when this is cooking, it will uh, shrink a little bit. So it doesn't have to be minuscule. It doesn't have to be mince. Um, you could use ground beef if you wanted with this, but we like the steak better. So, all right, let me show you how to do that. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this in thirds just so it's easy to use, easy to cut up. Cut it like that. Then I take it and I cut it once the other direction. Good. And then I just cut it into nice bite-sized pieces. We got about that big. There you go. Those are about bite-sized pieces and they will brown nicely. Let's do the rest. Okay guys, this is our boiling water. I don't know if you can see it's steaming, but I'm gonna put the potatoes in it over here because our cabinet stove ratio is too small to accommodate my large soup pot. All right, so we're just gonna drop our potatoes in. Now, if you do see a little discoloration on the potatoes, that's because I'm filming a cooking show and they've been sitting for, I don't know, a little while, so they started to oxidize a little bit. If you're doing this on the fly, you won't have that problem. Okay. These are in deep in the water, so I'm gonna put this back on the stove to boil for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes is my best guess. Sometimes a little less, and sometimes a little more. Basically, you want them to be able to stick a fork or a knife in it and break them apart because we're going to put them through a magic device called a ricer. So a ricer is basically, it's a sieve with a plunger. We'll put the potatoes in here. You squish it and they come out like spaghetti uh, and then they're super soft and that's how you make mashed potatoes. If you don't have one of these, don't need it. You can use a masher or whatever you got. All right, let's get these back on the stove. Okay, you guys, here's the potatoes on the stove. As you can see, there's a whole lot of clearance here between the top of the pot and the pot. So I have to do it elsewhere and then bring it back each time. It's kind of dumb, but that's just how it is. Okay, um, potatoes are in. They are set with a timer. So we'll see you in a little bit. 
Just a little update, two minutes to go. Okay guys, we're doing a lot of work with the sink over here just because it's easier to show you because we're using everything that's big. So this is a big bowl. Good timing, potatoes are done, hear that? Okay, so over here we're going to be using some coconut oil uh, instead of butter today. Uh, coconut oil helps with the glycemic index for those of you maybe with diabetes or doing a lower carb, lower, I didn't say low, lower. Um, it helps to slow down the digestion of the potatoes. So we're gonna be using about a half a cup of this today and I'm just gonna put it in the bowl because it'll melt as the potatoes go in. And we're gonna be using about a half a cup, maybe just a little bit more, which may sound like a lot, but when you put butter, it's not really that much. And remember, this is also a bunch of different meals. You know what? I'm feeling like a little bit more. So maybe three quarters of a cup. There we go. Hot and steamy. Okay, so I'm letting the water dry out of these a little bit, and then I'm gonna set them here in the sink, and I'm gonna let them sit and steam for just a couple minutes, just to dry them out a bit. It just makes a better mashed potato. Okay, then we have our ricer here, and we're just gonna put, figure out which way to run this. Uh, we just put the potatoes in here, you just close this down, it's super easy, and you squeeze. Now, if you make a lot of mashed potatoes like we do, this is a brilliant device. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but we really like this one. I don't know where I got it. I think it's vintage, and I think I got it at a garage sale. So I'll show you how to use it. Oh, it has a little thing here, so it sits on the edge of the bowl. Ta-da. Okay, super easy. Just take your cooked potato and you pop it in here. Like so. Then you put the plunger and then you simply squeeze it. And I'll show I'll put it upside down so you guys can see how it works. Just squeeze it. Look at that. It's called a ricer. Look at that. It's like spaghetti. All right, last one, you guys. Super easy. Look at that. Boop. And you just scrape it off. Now, I will tell you a trick. If you use this, make sure you do not let it dry because you will never get the stuff out. Here's my hot tip. Hot tip. Okay, so we got our coconut oil in there. I guess I'm just going to leave it here because it's super easy to show you guys. Um, now I just give it a quick toss. You do not want to smash it. Try to think of it like you're folding uh, egg whites or something. So we just want to toss it around and try to keep the fluffiness. Oh, that coconut smells amazing. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of salt. And a little more salt. And I'm not going to put pepper because there's going to be plenty of pepper in the beef. So no pepper is needed. Give that a toss. Just make sure all the coconut oil is melted through. Okay, so this is the choice part of the game here. We are using sour cream. If you cannot have sour cream, for instance, you do not do dairy well, don't have sour cream. But we're going to put sour cream. So I've got a big chunk here. And I'm going to put about two cups of sour cream. So it is a lot. But remember, this is a lot of meals. This is not just one portion. And the sour cream is going to complement the beef, which is going to have sour cream eventually as well. All right. Again, try not to smash it too much. Just try to let it melt in. And give it a little stir. I'm gonna fold it. Boy, I tell you, airplanes. And you know what? You're done. I'm just gonna give it a little taste just to make sure we don't need more salt. 
Yep. There we go. Delicious. Mashed potatoes. Okay, you guys, here comes the preppy part of this. So, um, uh, we've got our meat ready to go. We've got our onions ready to go. We got all this kind of good stuff. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it by the stove because we're going to need to sit up in this area. A big train going on here so these are going to be um, lunch and dinner sizes we got these and then we also have these big ones for any left for any leftovers so we can put that there but um, I recommend glass it goes in the microwave easier it is easier to clean it tastes better all that kind of good stuff so now we're ready to dispense Okay, you guys, here's what we got going on over here. Since we are doing a lot of stuff, I got two pans, two nonstick pans, and I've also got a big pot where I will be putting the cooked materials, which we're just gonna toss together at the end. So it's just, just easier to have it right here. So I just have two pans. We're gonna start by browning the meat. So brown meat, brown meat, go in the pot. Brown meat, brown meat, go in the pot. Brown meat, brown, you get it. Okay, so then we'll uh, do the onions and we'll do the mushrooms and we'll brown those and we'll put them in the pot and then we'll all come back together and we'll do the prep part at that time. Let's get started by starting some fire. All right, one, two, fire. Now this thing is all automatic, so if it gets too hot and the fan suddenly comes on, just have to bear with it, sorry about that. Um, so, all right, so let's make sure all the plastic stuff is out of the way. Everything here is heat proof. We're gonna get these pans smoking hot. That's our goal. Smoking hot. Okay, these pans have been heating up a while. I got the door open, it's hot in here, and I wanna hear that sizzle. Now, don't overcrowd your pan. That's why we're doing it in batches, is we want the meat to brown. My meat is at room temperature. It's always better to try to brown it when it's at room temperature instead of fridge temp. Now, the browning is to develop the flavor. That's the whole point. Once you put it in the pan, don't touch it. You can see there, whoop, been dripping everywhere. There we go. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for some nice brown color on there. You also see in the pan it's getting brown. So, but see how there's bubbles and it's still steaming a little bit? We're trying to let that cook out a little bit before we start flipping stuff here. All right, now I'm gonna just toss this around a little bit. You can see the nice brown, there's a perfect piece. Look at the nice brown color developed on there. So that's gonna be flavor, that's called fond, by the way. And look people, using the red tongs for the meat, cause you're all about that. Okay, so see how this fond is not coming off the bottom here? That tells me that this meat is about done. I don't want it to burn. So try to use the moisture and get all that goodness off of there. And then I'm going to just take this, I'm going to put it in our pot. That's it. And now while this was still hot, I want to put more meat back in so that I don't want it to burn. And again, then don't touch it. Okay. 
Okay, it's getting a little funky and burny. Take that off. You want to just bring it right to the edge. Let you guys can smell this. All right, we had to switch cameras. The other one shut down saying that it was too hot in here. Yes, it's hot in here. I'm sweating, but uh, apparently electronics don't like that. So, okay, we're on to the GoPro. So here's where we're at. We have the meat going. I've got the meat in the pot and I was going to put the pepper on next. So I'm just adding a little bit of pepper layer each time just to season the meat and just a little bit of salt. I just season it a little bit along the way while it's still hot. Just like that. It looks like we're getting good here. Okay, I'm gonna move this pot back because I don't want it to get too hot. All right, while this is still hot and brown, we're gonna put about half the onions in here and let them sweat down. And they're gonna take up all the color from the meat as well. We want a nice brown, rich sauce. Okay. And then the other half of the onions. Look at that color development. Taking all the fond off the bottom. So we don't want to burn this, we just want to sweat them. And if you find that it's getting to be too dry, it's quite all right to add some water. We'll probably do that in a little bit. But in the meantime, we're letting the juices, look at that, see it's pulling the brown off the bottom. And that is all the flavor. Okay, I think the onions on this side are just about good. Again, pour them in the pot. And then we can put about half the, uh, the uh, mushrooms. And these don't have to get too cooked, just softened up. Now remember I said they were too dry. I think these are a little dry. And I'm just gonna add a little water. There we go. Just to loosen up the bits. All right, I think these are good. All right, our last thing to cook are the mushrooms here. There we go. Oh, and there's the fan that I told you would come on if it got too hot. Oh, I wish you guys could smell. Oh, we have a runaway. Look at that one. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna put these together. Whoops, there we go. Then we can move our main pot over here. And I'm gonna add some water, about a cup, so it doesn't scorch. And now we just wanna bring this up to a boil so that all those spices and the salt and the onions and everything, can you guys see that? It looks really good. We wanna bring it all together so that the flavors can all marry together and cook the meat through a little bit more to make it more tender. So I'm just gonna put a cover on this so it doesn't dry out. There we go, we'll check on that in a minute. Okay, again, we were just getting the color off the pan here, and I think we have achieved that. So let's take these while they still have a nice amount of moisture in them, and we're going to put them in here. And turn, off the, turn off the fire over here. to the fire over here 
just so it's closer to the camera. Okay, so the real magic here, to me, is the flavor of the mushrooms going with the beef. So, let's get these two going. We'll check our water level. Water looks good in the bottom. I just want this to steam and stew for a, about 20 minutes. So once this comes to a boil, we'll turn it down to a simmer, and we'll put the lid on and we'll leave it alone. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down to a simmer. And then I'm gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. All right, and we'll be back in about 20 minutes. Okay, this camera overheated, but it seems to be doing well now. So just to check in, so the stew is in the pot, the, the stroganoff is in the pot, we brought it up to a simmer, and now we're just gonna simmer it for about 20 minutes to soften the meat. All right, we're back, it's been 20 minutes. This has been cooking away, the alarm just went off. Let's check it out. Oh, see, here's the issue. Can't lift that, anyway. Look at this, how good does this look? Been stewing away all the goodness, all the flavors. Now, that may seem like a little too much juice, but I guarantee you once this cools down a little bit, that juice will reabsorb into the meat and such. So let's turn this off. Off, 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 everybody's off. And now I'm just going to chase the gravy to see if it needs anything. Let's give it a little taste. Ooh, that looks hot and delicious. Okay, it's really good. But for some reason, everything seems to need some salt today. So let's put a little more salt. Boom, ba -da boom. Again, this is to your taste. If you're on a low salt or you don't like salt or you don't want salt, don't put salt. That's just my my taste. Okay, I think this is totally done, you guys. Now, in traditional stroganoff, at this point, you would stir in the sour cream. But we're not going to do that because we're making our meal prep things. And in order to keep the sour cream uh, flavorful and fresh, it's going to get topped on... Uh, just a dollop on top of each of these as they put in the fridge. So we're just going to call that good and uh, let it cool for a couple minutes. Let me give it one more little taste just to get a little of the juice. Tasty, tasty. Mmm, much better. Okay, so that's good to go. Okay, I'm just going to let this sit for a couple more minutes while I re-tool re, um, the kitchen here so you can see the prepping. Okay guys, got the camera turned around here so you can see um, this is our meal prepping and uh, what I'm going to do is I've got our big vat of potatoes here. They've come down to room temperature which is good because we want everything to cool off because it's going to go in the refrigerator eventually here. So all I'm going to do is take a scoop of potatoes in each container, so about a serving. Got it, and then, and here we have our stroganoff. It's getting thicker, you can see that already, like I said it would. And then I've got a big ladle. I'll just take a ladle of this, about a serving, and we simply put it on there. How nice is that? Try it, well, we're just making a big old mess, oh well. Scoop. Scoop. All right, if 
for demonstration purposes, I'll stop there, but you guys can see. Just keep on going. And then what we'll do is we'll let these cool down. We'll put the lid on it, we'll let it cool down, and then we'll put a dollop of sour cream just before it goes in the fridge. So just to keep the critters off of it and such, we got lids here. And I'm just gonna put them there. I won't seal them yet because, like I said, we are gonna open it back up. We'll stack them up. I'm telling you, invest in these glass containers. They are so much better than plastic. And then shift it. And just keep on going. We got all eight of those. Look at that. Eight meals. Look at that. Eight meals. You can't see that. Eight meals ready to go in the fridge or freezer. And now a special one. And uh, this special one is called lunch because I'm hungry. A little scoop of that. A nice juicy scoop of that. A little more gravy because I'm a gravy guy. All right, let's uh, zoom you in a little bit here so you can actually see what's going on. So we got our stew. Why do I keep calling it stew? We got our stroganoff. And I've got some sour cream here. Let's get a little dollop of sour cream because I love some sour cream. Look at that. Boom. And then just to make it pretty for the gram. Did I have something for the gram? Throw on a little leaf. Boom. What you think about that? What you think about that? I think it looks pretty darn good, you guys. I'm very excited. All right, let's give it a taste. Do 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 spoon. Because it is a mama chippy waiting for. Woo! You guys, I'm so excited. I've been doing this for like three hours. No. I, you know, it doesn't take that long. It takes about an hour when you're doing it real time, but when you're trying to film and change camera angles and your camera comes shut down because it's too hot in the kitchen, it takes a while. But you're worth it, and I like showing you guys how to do this. Hey guys, I'm excited. We got to the end of this video. Took a quite a long time to make because I'm trying to like do three things at once. I'm trying to make a video, trying to like have my phone shut down, and also make some food for us and you. Anyway, I'm excited to try this, you guys. Um, it is the moment you've been waiting for. It is the moment I've been waiting for because I'm hungry. It's like 3 o'clock and I haven't had anything to eat. So check it out. Here is our stroganoff. I hope the contrast is not too bad. You guys can see. Um, I'll take a little bite. So we have, um, this is just a tomato leaf on top to look nice. Boom, that's gone. Okay, so here is what it is. Now, this is deconstructed. So um, the sour cream is normally mixed in, but since we are doing meal prep, we just put it on top and we put it in the fridge so that way when it gets heated that way when it gets heated up the next time it is nice and fresh because um, otherwise the sour cream just it just gets it's not bad it just doesn't taste as flavorful so that's why the sour cream is on that's why the sour cream is on top okay okay Okay, let's get a little taste here. So I've got a little beef, I got a little mashed potato, and I got some sour cream. Mm. Mustache inside the mouth. Mm. Guys, that is so good. Now, I love to put black pepper in mine. It gives it a little bit of extra zing. So check it out. Sour cream, beef, potato. Mmm. The extra 20 minutes actually makes a big difference for this, you guys. It goes from being steak to almost a stew consistency. And to me, that's that's worth it. And also, if you check it out, remember the time we spent to cut the meat up? It's in bite-sized portions. And I think that makes a big difference. I have something. Mmm. Guys, it's so good. Mmm. Totally forgot we did the special mashed potatoes. 
Remember with the coconut fat? Mm-hmm. You totally taste it. Now, it's not tasting like coconut like suntan lotion. It just has a different flavor. It doesn't taste like butter. It tastes rich, but it doesn't taste like butter. And also there's some sour cream in there, so it's adding to the whole flavor profile. Give it a try. If you don't like that, you don't have to do that. You can put it with butter. You can put it with milk. You can do whatever you want. Just showing you something different that we've tried here. Um, and uh, the beef is tender and bite-sized, and I just keep eating it because it's so good and I'm so hungry. Mm. Okay, putting it down, wiping my face, and saying, thanks for being here, you guys. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's what happens when you take too big of a bite on camera. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. These have been sitting on the counter, and these have cooled down. They're ready to go in the fridge. Um, yeah, you can put them in the fridge, but I don't like to heat everything else that's up in there. So that's uh, why I leave them out for a little bit. And if you set them on the cook, I stacked them up, but if you set them on the counter, they'll cool even faster. So check it out. Here's what I do. Here's what we do. We take these, open them up. Got our sour cream. Just take a scoop, pop it on the top. Take a scoop, pop it on the top. And then... Boom. There you go, meal prep done for the week. So uh, these will be going for lunches and extra dinners because there's eight of them. So that's four days, two of us, and then there's some extra goodies in case we have guests or lunch times for me because I work at home. There you go. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, like it, subscribe it, blah, 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 blah. You know all the YouTube stuff. Hit the bell, hit the like, hit the subscribe, come back for more, tell me you love what it's happening because that encourages me to do more of this. Do you want to see more meal prep? I would love to do more meal prep for you. This is something we do on a weekly basis and I never think to do it um, because it is such a big process. But um, now that I, I got it in motion, I could probably do more of them. And um, so, yeah, let me know. Um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye. All right. Sleep well, babies.